There my screen for those on watch. All right, how are we doing today? Yeah. A lot of you I do not recognize, but that's okay. Uh, for those who uh, sign in for me, and I'll grab one of those. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Coy Chambers. I'm the newest accounting faculty member uh, and the one going to be heading up this review today. Um, we've got chapters four, five, and six to get through today. So we're going to get started on chapter four, which is our adjusting journal entries. Uh, so on your packet here, we've got a trial balance. And we've got some accounts listed there as of March 31st. And we've got some additional notes down here. So we're going to be taking a look at our depreciation, some deferred rent. We've got some consulting services, supply and, and a one-year insurance policy uh, that we need to take a look at. So the instructions for this first part are basically looking over those five uh, notes there and doing the journal entries. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to go ahead and... Uh, those. Uh, they've got some additional accounts down here for you to use. Use that. Um, and then give you two or three minutes to, to do that. And then we'll go through and see how we did. So remember, you're trying to try out with the bottom of 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 the Deferred revenue and deferred rent revenue are the same account. So make sure you're looking at the right account when making those adjustments.
All right, to keep it moving, let's go ahead and talk about the first one. It should be the easiest one. You should never, ever, 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 ever miss this one. <laughs> We're looking at depreciation, right? And it says how much depreciation per month? How much depreciation is happening? $500. So again, we're doing adjusting journal entries. So we gotta have a debit and we have a, have a credit, right? So some of you guys already had this. What are we debiting? What account? There you go. Depreciation expense. Five hundred bucks. And then where does my credit need to go? Accumulated depreciation as well. Five hundred. What type of account is accumulated depreciation? Okay. It's a credit, but what kind of account is it? There we go. It's a contra asset account. Very good. You know more than you think, right? So, contra asset meaning that it's reported with all of our assets, but that it has the opposite balance. So, this credit is actually increasing our accumulated depreciation, right? Because we can't use the actual asset because we're not getting rid of any of the asset, right? We're offsetting the cost of it uh, with this accumulated depreciation, okay? How many of y'all got number two? Anybody? There's the first one is Depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. So letter B, we're talking about deferred revenue. How much money is in deferred revenue currently? How much? Nine thousand. Nine thousand as a credit, right? It says that two thirds of this has been earned. So remember that deferred rent revenue, deferred means unearned. So if it has been earned, can it still stay in that account? No. no. How much do I need to take out of that account? <clears throat> it says two thirds, right? Are we good with fractions? All right, this is <laughs> three thirds, all right? That's 100%. So I need two thirds over here. And how much is that gonna leave me down here? One third. Can someone fill in the blanks for me? How much am I gonna remove out of here? 6,000, right? So 9,000 divided by three is 3,000 times two to six. For those who may need a refresher on some math, okay? So that leaves us with 3,000 that we still owe to our customer, right? So the nine, the six, and the three, which one is my actual uh, part of my Justin Journal entry? The 6,000, right? Because these are just balances. And this is how we get from here to here, right? We have to make sure we're updating the ledger so that we make sure that this gets reported accurately. So I'm debiting deferred revenue here for 6,000. Are we in agreement with that? 
And what am I crediting here for 6,000 as well to balance this? 6,000? Uh, we still got 6,000, but what account do I need to use? Cash. Not cash. So cash in this one is never used in adjusting journal entries. Okay. Never use cash in adjusting journal entries. So where does that money need to go? Accounts receivable. Not accounts receivable. Rent revenue. Rent revenue, right? We're going from unearned to earned revenue. So how do we do on that one? Less so? Any questions on that particular one? Okay. Any questions on that one before you move to C? Okay, letter C says that we've earned consulting services during the period, during the month, but we've not collected it or clients, and it was 1500 bucks. So if consulting services have been earned, what account should that tell me? Not deferred. <clears throat> if I've earned it, right? Deferred means unearned, right? So if I've actually done the work of consulting, we have earned revenue, and it would be service revenue um, or consulting revenue, right? We can say consulting uh, service. Or oh, sorry, that is not a debit. But we've got earned revenue of fifteen hundred because we've done the work, but we haven't collected yet or billed the client. That's accounts receivable because if we've done the work, we need to eventually collect it, and if we're not collecting it now, we need to keep track of that. So it's going to go to accounts receivable or AR. For fifteen hundred. How did we do on that one? Any questions? So it's y'all's time, so ask questions if you're confused. There is no stupid question. Okay. Let's let her see. Letter D is referring to supplies on hand. How much does my trial balance currently show in supplies? 2000 as a debit. Right, if we report as that on the balance sheet, are we telling the truth? No, because how much do I actually have on hand? I got 800. So does that T account work? Two thousand dollar balance and then an ending balance of eight hundred. No. Do I need a debit or a credit? Credit. How much? Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, and that's how we get from point A to point B. So there's half of your adjusting journal entry there. So. We need a debit and we need a credit, right? So we're going to credit supplies for 1200. And I need a $1,200 debit to make this balance, right? We still have to have equal debits and equal credits. Where are we sending that money? Why is it supplies expense? It is the right answer, right? I don't want you to guess on all of that. I wasn't guessing. I was using it already. Yeah. Because we've used it. When do we record expenses? When they are incurred, right? When we've used the good or service. 
Have we used up these supplies? Mm -hmm. Yes. We had 2,000 and now we have eight. They went somewhere, right? So we've used them. So that means that we're taking it out of supplies and putting it into supplies expense. How are we feeling on that one? Okay. Those that are looking at the screen, okay. kind of have a give me on this last one, but we'll cover it just to make sure we're on the same page. So the next one, the last one of this part says a one year insurance policy was paid on March 1st for the current year. Where is that insurance policy money currently sitting? If we paid for something for a whole year at the beginning of March. insurance. There's $3,000 sitting in prepaid insurance. All right, so that happened on 3-1. When are we doing these journal entries? What does it say at the top? We're recording this as of March 31st. So have we used any of this insurance? Yes. Yes. So as of 331, how many months are left? We should have 11 months still left here. How do I how do I get the monthly cost of that? 3,000 divided by 12, right? That gives me how much? What did you get? 250, right? So every month, it's going to basically cost us $250. So what's left over is 11 times that. But you should have got $2,750. That's what is still left to be used. So how many months have expired? One month. So half of our journal entry is right here already. Because again, this is a balance. That is a balance. Our adjusting journal entry gets us there. Okay. So we are crediting prepaid insurance for two fifty. And where do we need to put the debit? What account do we need to use? Why is it insurance expense? Because the expense was incurred. We've incurred the expense, right? So we get to move that out of an asset and actually get to expense it. So we got insurance expense. So as we use up these assets, their cost goes to expense. How do we do on those five? It's usually the hardest part of these three chapters. Okay. Any questions? So it says in the problem that a one-year insurance policy was paid for on March 1st. We did that, right? So when we purchased it, we paid for an entire year. So since we haven't used any of it, that money has to go to prepaid insurance. So if we look at prepaid insurance, there's $3,000 sitting there. So then we divide that by 12 to figure out how much it's going to cost us per month. And how many months did we use? So up here at the top, it says that we're doing this as of March 31st. And we purchased it on March 1st. So we purchased it at the beginning of March, and now we're doing it at the end. So we've only used it one month. If we had purchased it in January, we'd be doing three months, right? You'd have 750. <clears throat> any other questions on that? Do we have any questions in the chat or anything? <laughs> That's okay. Good. Okay.
good shot. All right. So that's chapter four. Okay. Moving into chapter five. The first part here is a bank reconciliation. So go ahead and take a moment. And see if you can figure that one out. Am I good to your race? Anybody need any of this? If you need help on the setup of the bank bricks, you can use that little template on the board there. So, so this side has not been recorded. So we're saying that that so that is something so here is not going to get that but so we need to the sign this is So think about how it would affect the bank statements and that's where all the other shows and how it affects the bank statements and how it needs to affect it. That's what we're doing. So make sure you remember that you have any difference between the so once the girls that's uh one of the bank statements you can split it all oh, just like so it it's the same thing. So the bank account the bank account. You need to get that right. Okay, we're up. Yeah. So we have we have the bank account check. Because I got an add in our account or what? Subscribe and get at the bottom. 
This is with the customer paying us. Uh, yeah. Is that what you're yeah. Like, if we put this question like data, we're only going to have Anything that's for profit. Yeah. Usually it's EMT profit. That's the only because if it's a cash deposit or a check deposit, mm -hmm. we should have that in the and actually say I have a bank, so we're gonna already have that it's kind of like this. Right? So this is like stuff that's happening in our bank and then we can put it in our field and get the advice for all that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so this one would actually go to the So that's what that is. And then you have the traps and the card. You got it. But then they just have to So again. So, based on the credit and then bank charge expense, something like that. How are we doing? You ready to talk about it? Public. All right. So to make sure we're all on the same page, what's the whole point of doing this? What are we trying to do? What is a bank reconciliation? Get the bank report balance. Right. There's going to be timing differences, right, between what happens in our bank statement and our bank account versus what happens in our cash or our books, right? So this is basically just trying to say, we've got these differences and we know what the differences are, okay? So what is my balance in my bank? 9,333. 9, and what about my books? 10,000. 45. Very good. So from there, we need to go through the individual items to make sure that we have them in the right spot. So the first one I see is a bank service charge for $22. Where is that recorded accurately? The books or the bank? Okay. It's got to be in the bank statement, right? So where do I need to put it? It needs to go in the books. And how do bank service charges affect cash? Does it increase or decrease my cash? Increase. Decrease. So we got bank charge. 22 bucks. Number four there says that the bank charged two guys account $350 for a customer's NSF check. What does NSF mean? Non-sufficient non funds, right? So what happened was a customer gave us a check. They didn't have no money, right? So they're going to take it back out on us. So where is that check showing up? Is it in our bank statement or on our books? Oh. Oh. It's showing on our bank statement. So we have to put it on our books. And is that NSF check going to add to our cash or subtract? Subtract, sorry. So we're gonna subtract 350. Do we understand why we're subtracting 350 here? Because it was previously included in a deposit, which would have added to our account 
And now that they didn't have the funds, they're deducting it from our account. So it's going to decrease. Okay. <clears throat> what about the deposits in transit July 31st, 2100? Where is it shown correctly? Books. <clears throat> it's going to be on our books. So where do we need to put the adjustment? On our bank statement. And are those deposits, when they actually go through, when they're not in transit anymore, are they going to increase or decrease our bank? Increase. Increase. So we got deposits in transit. And 100. How are you doing so far? Okay. EFT deposit, the bank collected a $1,166 account receivable. Where is that showing up currently? In the bank. It's going to be on the bank statement. So we need to put the adjustment where? The book. On the books. And is it going to add or subtract? It's going to add. It's going to add. So there's our EFT deposit for $1,166. And then we've got outstanding checks of 594. So where are all of those reported currently? They're on our books. So where do we need to adjust them? On the bank. And so are those going to add or subtract once they go through? Subtract. So we got outstanding checks. Minus. 594. So the balance that you should have got, if you do the math here, you got 10,839. 10,839. And that is equal. Just like our trial balances have to be in balance, just like our balance sheet has to be in balance. The whole purpose of this is to explain the differences. So there should be no difference between this. And this. So if there is, you've done messed up somewhere, then you need to go find your error. Okay, that was part one. Part two says that we need to journalize the entries for this. For these adjustments here, these are not our normal adjusted journal entries, so we do use cash in this instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you draw a line down the middle here. We're separating our bank from our books. Which side needs to have journal entries done, the left or the right? Why is it the right? But we already said that this deposits was in our book correctly. And these checks are recorded in our books, so we don't need to report them again, right? So no journal entries for this side. So we're focusing on this and those two. And because we have additions and subtractions here, and we're dealing with cash, anything that's an addition, we already know half of our journal entry is going to be a debt at the cash. And we know anything down here, our deductions, is going to have to be a credit to cash. So we have half of our journal entry for all three of these. So let's take this EFT deposit here. We got a debit to cash for 11.66. I need a credit of 11.66. And what account is that going to go to? <clears throat> Why is it accounts receivable? Because says it in the problem, yeah, right? right? Yeah. It says that the bank collected accounts receivable. So a customer sent us cash. We then need to adjust their account to show that they actually paid for it. If we used some other account. Why would revenue not be applicable here, even though it says accounts receivable? What would it have to say for us to have used 
revenue, we would have had to provide some goods or services in this case. Here, they're just sending us cash on their account. Okay. This bank charge, we know that we're going to credit cash for $22 because it's a deduction here. So where does that debit need to go? I'll have it in the back up there. Where does that need to go? Oh, bank service. Sure. Bank service charge, bank expense, bank fees, right? Some account like that. And what type of account is this? It's not a contra asset, no. You know, no, we're not even gonna guess. So this is an expense account. Because again, we've used the service of the bank. Right? That's what a bank service charge is, a fee for us having a bank account. So at the end of the month, we've used or we've incurred this cost. So even though it doesn't say expense, that is an expense account. Okay. And then let's deal with this NSF check here. We're going to credit cash because we've got the deduction here. So credit cash, 350 and I need a $350 debit. What account is that gonna to go to? John. Why? Because you debited it because you thought you were receiving the check and you did it, so you get the same bill. So what happened originally was that we sold some customers something, right? And they owed us three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. We're on board with that. They sent us a check, which means that we got the cash, and we would have credited account receivable at that time. Which means, <clears throat> at that point when we made the deposit, we did not think that they owed us anything else because they paid us. But what is happening here? They got the money. So do they owe us this three hundred and fifty now? Yes. Yes. So we need to put that back on the books to show that they owe us the money. And if you write a bad check, whoever you wrote that check to is still going to want to feel back, right? Any questions on the bank reconciliation? Okay. The next one is talking about petty cash. So go ahead and take just a minute. I have a question. Go ahead and look at that petty cash one. Excuse me, we didn't see where the um last account needed to be credit debited. I didn't hear that part. Oh, it there be able to right now. now I can see. Thank you. Yep. All right, cut it off there a little bit on the stand, but <laughs> so again, journal entries are everything on the right hand side as long as you do it this way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 
All right, for those who are doing petty cash, let's talk about it. All right. So it says that a petty cash fund was originally established with a check of $150. What is petty cash? What is it used for? Should at least know that, nothing else. What is petty cash used for? Small stuff, right? Instead of us writing a check out of the operating account, we're gonna set aside some money for small purchases. In this case, postage, supplies, and equipment repair. So whenever we do that, right, to establish it, we debit petty cash, and we credit cash for 150 bucks. That's to establish the fund. What happens is we take the money out of our checking account, and we put it in our petty cash box. It's like a little lock box. Then what happens from there, we have these small purchases. So I would give you some money and you would go to the store, you would buy whatever we needed, you bring me back the change and you bring me back the receipt. So out of this cash box, we had 43.50 come out. We had 51.85 come out and we had $49 come out. So how much should be in this box based on those three transactions? $5.65. So in this case, it is $5.65. How much is actually in the box? We take 150, subtract 4350, subtract 5185 and 49. How much is sitting there? It's 565. In this case, it's the same. We may have overinsured, right? We may not get all the change back. We may get too much of something, right? So we hope that these two are the same because we have receipts for all of these minus our 150, just kind of like our bank reconciliation, right? We want to make sure that we can reconcile this difference. In this case, we don't have a difference, okay? So now it's talking about replenishing it. How much money do I still show in my petty cash account here on our books? 150. How much is in there? 565. So to replenish it, we do not touch petty cash. We credit cash for the difference, right, of what we're refilling from 565 to 150, which is 144.35. Then we're gonna tell what all of that money was for. So 43.50 was for postage. $51.85 was supplies. And then we have repairs and maintenance, $49. So the only time we touch petty cash is when we establish it, when we close it, or if we increase or decrease the balance in it. For the replenishment, we do not touch petty cash, the actual account. Comes out of our checking account and goes into the petty cash box. 
but we've still got the 150 sitting on the book. So all we're doing is replenishing it and then figuring out where that where those funds have gone. Whether it's an expense or an asset, wherever it went. So for those who are online. In this case, there was no over short because what we actually had in the box is what should have been in the box. If there was a difference, then we would have put that in some kind of over or short account. Any questions on that one? All right, now to chapter six. <coughs> So chapter six, we are using a perpetual inventory system. And during September, they give us six transactions. So go through and do the journal entries for those. Take a minute. And then we will go over that. For my class, my students, obviously some of us have not gotten there yet. Um, so do the best you can. How many of y'all have covered all of chapter six by now? How many have not covered all of chapter six? I mean, we covered it, but it's not like sinking in because we like doing it on time. Yeah, same here. To try and reiterate it like the previous chapters is really short on time. Same here, but my hands tomorrow. Time? We got a chance to get through it, but to be able to study on it and master it, it's like not enough time because the test is tomorrow. Gotcha. So we just finished it recently and we haven't gotten through like the assignments and stuff on Connect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So go ahead and take a minute, take a shot at it. So the way that they have it written, they aren't all expenses because this would this was like two supplies. No, it's uh, in the real world. It's, it's, it's just a model. All of them would be expensed in the real world. But for yeah. our purposes, no, so and it would just add to the balance, and then we take account. Yeah. Postage is actually on the well the tax input. Uh, it actually has a separate sign item for postage. Um, but either way, uh, yeah. as long as I know what it is. and then you got another that's in for it. Put it back in before it's good inventory, and then we take it out of all the good sold down the Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, so
All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this so that we try to get out of here at a decent time as well. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit afterwards if any of you guys have individual questions that you don't want to ask out loud. Um, and everyone online should have the, the original and we can get the, the key out to you as well. All right, so let's start going through these journal entries and see how we did. So on September 6th, we purchased 70 calculators from Danny Company for $1,400 on account. So what accounts are we using here? So we're using inventory. Is it going up or down? It's going up, so do we debit or credit inventory? So we're going to debit inventory. For fourteen hundred, and I need a fourteen hundred dollar credit. Where's that going to go? Accounts payable. Why is it accounts payable? Because it says we bought it on account. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to keep score, we've got inventory fourteen hundred. Got accounts payable fourteen hundred. Are we all? In agreement with that. Okay. September the 10th. We returned five calculators back to Danny Company because they did not meet our specifications and those had a cost of $100. So, what account needs to be used? One of them. What's one of the accounts? Payable. Accounts payable. Is my accounts payable going up or down in this case? Down. Going down. So we need to debit accounts payable. Because we did not like some of these calculators, so we sent them back. All right? <clears throat> so if we sent them back, I don't want to pay for them, so we need to reduce our accounts payable. I need a credit of $100 here as well to make this work. And what account does that need to go to? Inventory. Why inventory? Uh, because you're getting rid of calculators. We're getting rid of inventory, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to actually take it out of our books, right? We don't physically have this inventory anymore. So not only do we need to actually send it back, but we need to update our books as such also. So here we have $1,300 of inventory, and that matches $1,300 of accounts payable. How are we with those two? Okay. Now, September the 12th, We sold some calculators. We sold 30 of them to a great big bookstore on account for $900. Those calculators cost us $600. So whenever we sell inventory, how many journal entries do we have to make? Two. So we're gonna double this up here. What's the first journal entry that we do? What are we recognizing? Uh, the, sale. the sale, the revenue, right? So if I'm recognizing revenue, is that a debit or a credit to revenue? Credit, revenue, or sales, call it sales revenue. 
for $900. Where's my $900 debt need to go? Accounts receivable. Why accounts receivable? What's the key phrase there? On account, right? They did not pay us cash. So we have accounts receivable. So we can put accounts receivable down here. Keep track of it. Okay. Now we recognize the cell portion. What's the second one? What are we what are we needing to report? Cost of goods sold. The cost, right? So we sold inventories. So what happens to inventory? We're getting rid of it or losing it, right? So do we debit or credit it? Yeah, we're going to credit inventory. And that's the cost. 600. I need a $600 debit. And as we sell that inventory, where does that money need to go? Cost of goods sold. Because it's the cost of the goods that we sold. Okay. So we take it out of inventory and we put it into cost of goods sold. We're good with those two. Okay. Then a couple of days later, on September 14th, the great big bookstore decided they didn't like some of the calculators that we sold to them. So they returned five of them which had a sales price of 150 and a cost of 100. So if we have a return of a sale, how many journal entries do we have? Two. Two. Right? So the first one, just like we had here, we had to recognize the sale. We have to kind of undo the sales portion, right? So, what are my accounts involved? Again, so we don't use this sales revenue. We don't just reverse that, right? We use that special account called sales returns and allowances. And is that going to be my debit or credit? That's my debit. So there's sales. Turns and allowances for 150. I need a $150 credit. And where is that going? Accounts receivable. Because do they owe us that money anymore? No. So we can take 150 off here. And we're left with 750 in accounts receivable. That's how much they owe us. So that took off the sale. And now they sent us this inventory back. So what do we need to do with it? We're going to put it back on the shelf, hopefully, so we can resell it to someone who actually wants it. So we need to put it back on our books to inventory for $100. And what is my credit going to go to? Because it's not sold, right? So we can't have money in something that says cost of goods sold if those are no longer sold. So that when you do reverse that journal entry from here. We go with those. All right. Well, let's finish out strong here. We paid Danny Company for the September 6th purchase. Oh, yeah, you can scroll down. So we're paying Danny Company. How much do we owe Danny Company? $1,400. $1,400? Yeah. I got a different amount. $1,300. Why is it $1,300? Because we sent back $100 back to so we sent back that hundred dollars, so we only owe them thirteen hundred, right? So here we're paying them, so cash is involved, and if we're paying cash, is that the debit or credit? Credit. So it's a credit to cash, or 
1300 and we reduce our accounts payable 1300 so our accounts payable is fulfilled Are we good with that? Okay. And the last one here is the September 22nd, where the great big bookstore actually sent us payment. How much did they owe us? It's not 900. Why is it a 750? So we originally sold them nine hundred dollars worth of stuff, but then they sent us one hundred and fifty back. So we have to make sure we update accounts receivable, and that's what we did here in September fourteenth. So they only owe us seven hundred and fifty. So if they're sending us payment, we're getting cash. So do we debit or credit cash? Debit cash for seven fifty. Credit accounts receivable. For 750, then we can update our T accounts and that zeroes out. Are you going to be raised? What's well, up? How do you, how do you get uh, 750? So remember, we had the 900 that went into accounts receivable here on September 12th. Huh. Then they sent us some back because they didn't like it. And we credited accounts receivable for 150. So the 900 minus the 150 leaves me 750. My math right on that? So 750 was left. Oh, okay. Just like when we sent back the stuff up here. We didn't want to pay that hundred dollars. Same thing with our customers. All right. So the last piece is on the back of that page. So the first one says, what amount would Rhea report as the net sales in September on the income statement? So how much sales did I actually have? Look through your journal entries and see where we actually had sales. How much were our sales? $900. 900, thank you online. Are we good with 900? So on September 12th, that credit to sales revenue is the only sales entry that we had. So we had returns too. We did have returns, which has got to be getting two net sales. So then we have to take into account sales Returns and allowances, did that add or subtract from our sales? Got to subtract 150. Uh, so 750 is our net sales. So our gross sales are everything that we sold, minus any sales discounts that we may have given, minus sales, returns, and allowances. That is our net sales. In letter C, it is asking for gross profit. So for our gross profit, we start with net sales. And what do we do to net sales to get gross profit? Not the expenses. We sell 
cost of goods sold. How much were our cost of goods sold? So we had 600 here as a debit, but then we credited cost of goods sold on September 14th. So if we take those two balances and subtract because we have a debit and a credit, how much are we left with? $500 in cost of goods sold. So then our gross profit is 250. And then the last one is just uh, another formula. And it is our gross profit percentage. So the gross profit percentage is our gross profit divided by net sales. So that is gross profit of 250 divided by net sales of 750. So we get 0.33 or 33%. So all of these work together to get to our gross profit percentage. And again, gross profit is what pays the bills. Any questions, comments, concerns, bits of outrage, anything that you need to get off your chest before we get out of here today? It's up to me like so they're they're depending on who you have, I don't have access to all the exams, but I know most of it is like exam one with multiple choice. Yeah. Uh, there are gonna be some journal entries. Uh, there are gonna be some of these journal entries as well. We've got adjusting journal entries in this. Um, the one exam copy that I have, the bank reconciliation is not done the way that we did it today, but it gives you all the information and it, you have to basically get what it's asking you. Like, you got to know how to do it to get the answer, right? It's conceptual then. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. So for those online, I'll hang around for a minute. For those in here, if y'all don't have any questions, y'all are free to go, and then I'll Thank give you anyone back. who... Push that back. Thank yeah. you. So the ones online, uh, can put, uh, uh, yeah. any questions that you have in the chat? Yeah. It's a little loud in here. I really I'll take that. Is this the people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'll have a good exam. Bro, I'm cooked. If it, if it says round two, yeah, it's just 33 percent or 33.33, and that's it because it's repeating. Okay, yeah. We're just needing to turn down online people. Uh, Have a good day. Thank you. Go on. What I'll do is I'll actually let me see if I can download this.
evening. Any questions online or are we good? So uh, I heard you talking about at least the uh, reconciliation part of the test. Is, is that going to be more conceptual than it is like actually doing the, the, the statements? Yeah, so you'll need to know how to do the reconciliation, but it's not going to be in the same format that we did on the answer key or that we did in here. So you're still going to have to know how to do it all um, but it's going to be a multiple choice question, at least the one exam copy that I have. Um, the other instructors may have it done a different way, so just be prepared for both. Because if you can do the bank reconciliation and know what you're doing, then the conceptual part should come with that. Right, yeah, yeah, just got to like know how to actually do it, know what accounts go where and all that. Exactly. Got it, okay, that's that's good. Um, no, right, know, so know what the terminology is, like what we're doing, right? You're getting the updated cash balance. So know what that is, right? Know the journal entries that are associated with it, different things like that. You said updated cash balance. Yes, sir. I'm cooked. I'm going to be studying all night. So. All right. Good to it. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I have only three people. Stop recording. Congratulations. That was a great turnout.